right. <clears throat> All right, ladies, so this is our last lecture for Chapter 7, Lecture 3. Um, today we're covering two sections, Section 3 and Section 4. Um, it's my hope that with what we've gone through in Chapter 7, um, that you guys will be equipped to do your Chapter 8 project, which you'll be working on next week. Um, and the gist of it is going to be that you are going to take everything you've learned this year and apply it to your life. So kind of keep that in mind as we go through these last couple of sections. Um, so section three is committed disciples help share the help spread the gospel. The main idea of this section is that committed disciples of Jesus become like him by imitating his actions, sharing his love, staying in touch with him through prayer, and spreading the gospel through the world. Um, so think about ways that you can do all of those things, um, like those things as in imitate his actions. I don't know if you can see my mouse or not, but imitate his actions, share in his love, stay in touch with him through prayer, and spread the gospel throughout the world. Um, so the beginning of this chapter talks about comfortable Catholicism. I really like the way, I'm actually going to read it, I think, because I like the way the book talks about it. Um, pretty much it introduces the chapter with a story um, from a guy who spoke at um, the National Catholic Prayer Breakfast. Um, and it talks about how, um, I don't want to read this whole page, but ultimately that we as Catholics have a tendency to not speak, um, either one, not agree with the church on certain things, or two, agree with it, but agree with it silently and not speak when um, the world as a whole kind of attacks the church. Um, and so it, it talks about how Catholics who, I'm just going to read his quote, actually. I'm, I'm trying to summarize it, and it's just taking me forever. So, and, and one fact is not, if one in fact does not believe what the church teaches or for now, at least, even does not believe those teachings, but is prepared to be completely silent about them, one is safe. One can still be a comfortable Catholic. In other words, a tame Catholic, a Catholic who is ashamed of the gospel or willing to act publicly as if he or she were ashamed, is still socially acceptable. But a Catholic who makes it clear that he or she is not ashamed is in for a rough go. He or she must be prepared to take risks and make sacrifices. If, Jesus said, anyone wants to be my disciple, let him take up his cross and follow me. So he quoted that scripture passage we read in the last section. Um, we American Catholics have become comfortable, have forgotten or ignored that timeless gospel truth. There will be no ignoring it for now. So, Basically, that means that we have a tendency, um, and we're called to do the opposite of this tendency, but we have a tendency to not speak, to not defend the church as we're called to do. Um, and so Jesus commanded the disciples to go out and baptize and teach what he has taught. And that means teaching things like forgiveness. Um, so forgiveness, you guys know what that is, but also repentance. So that means we have to be willing to to identify sin as God identifies it, and not fall into our own understanding of it. So this is where we have the church to identify sin for us. And so with that, we're called to repent. Also love God above all else and not fall into um, the comforts of this world and putting those above God. Love our neighbors as we love ourselves, um, to serve others and to share God's peace, justice, and mercy with everybody. Um. Pope oh, Francis talks about what this sharing of the gospel looks like. And on page 252, he says, I expect a mess. Um, and pretty much to summarize his thing, which was actually really cool, um, he says that he doesn't want Catholic churches being comfortable and staying in their homes. He wants them to go out on street corners and share the gospel, love their neighbor, and he expects it to not be all pretty in a church pew. He wants us to go out and get messy and get our hands dirty, roll up our sleeves, and do what we're called to do. That's like the summary. He says it much better than I just did. So if you'd like to read it, it's on page 252. Um, also, Pope Francis wrote a letter 
called Evangelium Gaudium, which is, which is translated the joy of the gospel. And he goes very much in depth how this duty we have to the gospel is not something that should be um, a burden to us, for lack of a better word. It's something that we're called to enjoy, take joy in going out and preaching forgiveness, repentance, loving God above all else, and serving others, and sharing God's peace. It's something we're called to enjoy. It's not just like this burden that we have to do because we don't want to go to hell. No, God wants us to take a great joy in sharing the gospel with our neighbors. And so this is a quote from that letter. An evangelizer, an evangelizer must never look like someone who just came from a funeral. Just came from a funeral. Sorry about the typo. We're called, like, this isn't, we shouldn't be, like, dragging our feet and saying, God, God loves you, and then kind of hiding behind somebody so, because we're embarrassed by it. No, we're not supposed to be ashamed of it. And if we're convicted of it, we're not ashamed of it. We're quite enthusiastic about it. Um, and so, that's a really good letter, which we wouldn't have time to read in this class. Recommend it for anybody who wants to know more about it. Um, so teen disciples are called to commitment. So you guys can all think of a hundred ways you're committed to one thing or another, um, whether it be a team sport or um, studying for a big exam. Um, I don't know what else you guys do or what else you're committed to, but we're all you're, you guys are all committed to one thing or another. You're all committed. You're all here. Um, you're all committed to good grades. You're all committed to succeeding at different things. Um, and so as far as our faith, we're called to commitment to service, prayer, and worship. And so it's not like a, I'm going to do it if I feel like it kind of thing. It's like, I'm going to do it because I want to succeed at it. And so in the same way that um, our relationship with God, you know, is something that looks differently for everybody. Like if you're on a team sport, let's say soccer, because I really like soccer. Um, it might be a struggle for you to feel comfortable on the field might be a struggle for you to feel comfortable kicking a ball around even by yourself or with a friend. And so it takes a commitment to say, I want to do this because I love to do it. I might not feel good at it. I might not feel confident at it. Um, and same goes for being a disciple of Christ. And so your book talks about ways to start and it goes in depth, not super in depth, but ultimately how um, if you want to know how to share the gospel that these are just some tips on how to start. So um, it talks about greeting and it gives a very short description of it, um, but ultimately acknowledging the presence of other people. It's not this super rocket science-y thing, um, but it talks about how you can do a sincere smile, nod, glance toward another. It's just a way to evangelize. You're acknowledging the presence of another human being, not rocket science. I have confidence you guys can start there and do an excellent job. Um, the next question, or the next way is to engage. Um, and so that's just ultimately, it can look differently for different things. I can't think of an example for some reason at the moment, um, but just inviting somebody into a conversation. And then the next one is question. Um, so this is sort of a way to get to know the person you're greeting and engaging. I'm trying to think of like more in-depth ways to explain these, but I, I just can't. They're pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. And so the last one is invitation. So you can invite them to a relationship with you. Um, you can invite them to know God. You can invite them to Mass. You can invite them to youth group. You can invite them to a church event. All sorts of things. That could look differently for everybody. So not super rocket science-y. How to start evangelizing. How to start being a disciple. Greet, engage, question, invite. Um, heaven is the goal of discipleship. I thought we were done with this section. I forgot about this slide. Um, so Jesus wants everyone in heaven. You guys should know that. Hopefully you do. Um, and we're called in order to get there to take up our cross. And this isn't going to be easy, acceptable, or fashionable by societal standards. It will be um, a lot of suffering, a lot of sacrifices, but also very much worth both. Um, the basis for your own judgment as an effective disciple will be what you do or did not do for others. So God does not let everybody into heaven. I know that's like a very widely accepted understanding, but hell exists for a reason because people don't want to all spend 
eternity with Jesus. And so if that's a choice we make here on earth, God's not going to force it on us. Um, and he does want us to go to heaven, though. And so he invites us to do that time and time again and will forgive us if we choose otherwise. Um, but our time on, here on earth is what's going to determine that and our acceptance or rejection of him. If you did not already do so, pause and do your comprehension questions, and then we'll go on to the next section. So, section four, Jesus taught his disciples how to pray. The main idea, this is a really short section, um, but the main idea is that prayer is a necessary component for building a relationship with God and being a committed disciple. Through his words and his own prayer life, Jesus offered a model for many different kinds of prayer. So this section goes very in-depth and um, in how Jesus prayed and how Jesus how Jesus ultimately went off to pray on his own a lot of times, which is an example, but also how he prayed in front of people. And so this chapter, go, or this section, I mean, goes in depth into how those things look. Um, and it talks about how it's important for discipleship. Um, I'm going to have, so today in class, I want you guys after you do your next section of comprehension questions, on page 257, there's all these little boxes, um, and there are just really, really good scripture passages that you are going to want to know for your next for next week. And I really want um, you to take the time and read with them and pray with them. Read them and ask God over and over. How can this apply to my life? How can this apply to my life? Say it as many times as you need. But all the little sections on the bottom, um, because they're just really good passages, and I don't want to sit here and read them because you'll just fall asleep, but um, they're really good passages on how we can grow in our relationship with God and how we can invite him to, how he invites us to grow closer to him. Just really good passages, like, so... Um, also in prayer, those who humble themselves will be exalted. I forget why I included that. Um, I'm sure there was a good reason. Um, but our, the Our Father is the perfect Christian prayer. It is the summary of the gospel. Um, yeah, so I think that's it for this section. Um, yeah, so that sums up chapter 7. Be prepared for chapter 8 next week. Um, you guys are going to be doing a project on it and think about how you're going to tie in everything we learned this year into how you can apply it to your life this upcoming summer. Have a great day, ladies.